Let's all stand together, turn to page 601. In the 601, I was reading the first verse of this song, What a Fellowship, What a Joy Divine, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine. And I was thinking about a verse that uh, Miss Barb shared with us uh, in Sunday school just a little bit ago about uh, as children of God, we're not given a spirit of fear, amen? So let's sing 601, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms, 601. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from. What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms, I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. see everyone the weather is changing it is shifting in a good way and it's good to have you here this morning on a bright sunny Sunday morning glad you're here and uh, looking forward to church today it's good to have brother Dallas back with us had some health issues but we praise the Lord getting people back and of course our, our family we love to be with one another and we praise the Lord that we can fellowship let's begin the service with a word of prayer brother Dallas would you have prayer for us Amen. You may be seated. We have started something recently, started doing singing choruses, and I want to do that again today. So if we can have the change, we've done a couple different choruses, but we're going to, this one most of you know, it's in our hymn book. It's I Love to Tell the Story. We'll sing just the chorus, and uh, I'll give a reason for this a little later. Here we go now. I love to tell the story, twill be my theme in glory, to tell the old, old story of Jesus. One more time. I love to tell the story, twill be my theme in glory, to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. Good. At this time, we're going to go the next one up there. We're going to sing Just One More Soul. And as some of you know this chorus, some of you not as well. We'll sing just the chorus. Here we go. Just one more soul were to walk down the aisle. 
It would be worth every struggle. It would be worth every mile. A lifetime of labor is still worth it all if it rescues just one more. One more time. Because if just one more soul were to walk down the aisle, it would be worth every struggle, it would be worth every mile. A lifetime of labor is still worth it all if it rescues just one more soul. All right, this next one we know a little better. Yesterday, today, forever, Jesus is the same. Everyone sing out. Here we go. Yesterday, today, forever, Jesus is the same. All may change, but Jesus never. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Good. All may change. Never glory to his name. Good, wonderful. We'll sing one more chorus a little later. We have picked these choruses on purpose. This month is our missions month. And uh, here in a little bit, we'll give a vision for our mission. And uh, we'll have another chorus here soon. And it's all about seeing one more person come to Christ and giving the gospel to one more soul. And we want to be soul conscious. There are people who their souls will spend an eternity somewhere. So we're going to talk more about that. But at this time, take your hymn books. Go to hymn 112. We'll sing The Old Rugged Cross. 112. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown Let's sing that second on that old rugged cross so despised by the world as a wondrous attraction for me for the dear lamb of god left his glory above to bear it to dark calvary so I'll cherish the old rugged cross. Trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. To the old rugged cross, I will ever be true. Its shame and reproach gladly bear. Then he'll call me someday to my home far away, where his glory forever I'll share. So I cherish the old rugged cross Till <clears throat> last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange
exchange it someday for a crown. All right, young people, you are dismissed to junior church. All right, head to junior church. All right, good deal. Young people, you are free to leave. All right, go have fun. All right. All right, we'll see you all. Thank you, Brother Brian and Miss Melissa, for working with the young people. All right. Take your bulletins, if you will. Yesterday, it sounds like the ladies had a good time at the ladies' fellowship, and it uh, sounds like they had a great time. Um, we... I was watching Lukey, so I was running all over the church trying to keep up with him. But I'm glad uh, you ladies had a good time that we're able to come to that. And uh, it's just good to have Christian fellowship and uh, learn about one another. As a church family, I think it's important to fellowship. I think it's vital to have dinner with one another and um, talk with one another and find out what the other person is going through. And to try to help one another, I think it's a good idea to do that uh, with lots of people, but especially with those in your church family. And uh, there have been many people over the last year who are new that were not here uh, a couple years ago. So I think it's good to get to know one another. So I hope you'll do that. A lot of things coming up tonight after the evening service. We are going to have a business meeting. And I have some uh, updates on our roof. We are getting very close to getting that done. I pray that we'll have that done before June. Uh, I know I'm pushing that up a little bit. But I'm praying it's going to be done before June, so pray with me about that. Tomorrow night, ladies have a Bible study right here at the church starting at 7 o'clock. And um, Miss Connie will be hosting that. So tomorrow night, bring a Bible, bring a notebook. And uh, if you do have questions, you can ask. And uh, just go through with that. And uh, ladies will go into God's Word uh, tomorrow night. Um, and just to be clear on this, I know I have a lot of announcements, but this is not a time to come together to fellowship. This is specifically focused on studying God's Word with other ladies. So, ladies, I think it would be great if you can come. Bring your Bible. Once again, bring a notebook. On March 9th, Tuesday of this week, we are going to the Muncie Mission, and we are going to put on a dinner for them. Um, we have the church is providing the main um, meal, but I do need some more desserts, I think, Miss Renee. We need another brownie and another pie. If you'd like to sign up on the back sheet before you leave, there's a paper back there, or you can talk to Miss Renee, and we need those by... Okay, when you're going to bring it, make sure you let Miss Renee know, so uh, we have to be there uh, around 3.30 tomorrow on Tuesday, so make sure you don't make a sweat that your dessert's coming. Uh, try to get it there ahead of time, or talk to us and let us know. Uh, next week, a missionary, Jonathan Mislin, will be here. He's a missionary headed to the Philippines. Looking forward to having him. Ushers, go ahead and come forward. On the 20th and 21st, in a couple weeks, we have a missions conference. On Saturday evening, we're going to have a, an international dinner, and our guest speaker will be preaching and speaking to us on missions. And uh, we have some interesting things planned for that night. So be here for that. Um, I don't have the sign-up sheet back there, but we will have that tonight, and then it will be here for next week. We're going to do a dinner that Saturday night and also a dinner on Sunday night. So uh, looking forward, or not Sunday night, Sunday after, in the morning after the service. Yes. Sorry? Yes. Yes. We'll get to that here. So bring that dinner if you would be a part of that. Uh, looking forward to that. On the 26th, we have a snack and games night at 6 o'clock, and uh, looking forward to that. Uh, choir. We are going to start practicing tonight at 5.45. So if you're in our choir, um, we are going to start practicing for Easter Sunday, trying to get things back going again. So looking forward to that. Uh, Ms. Renee, you had a quick question or comment? Yeah, we'll have hot dogs of some sort. Okay, good deal. All right, I think that was all I had to say on... You guys just stand and look pretty for a minute. I'm sorry I called you up early. We have two young ladies right now that I know of. Maybe there's others. Uh, as far as I know, two young ladies in college um, from our church, um, spent time here from our church, uh, Amanda and Henrietta, and I'd like to do something for them. How many of you remember Henrietta? Several of you should. 
uh, just a sweet lady, went off to college and uh, wants to serve the Lord. And uh, how many of you remember Miss Amanda? Amanda, good, good. She was here more recently, and uh, she is in college. And what I'd like to do is, as a church, those of you who went to college, who were there, went through that time, it can get hard. It's tough. I want to send them a card of some sort. I'd like you personally to send them a card, maybe a gift card. It doesn't have to be much. Trust me, when I was in college, if somebody sent me a dollar, I was pretty excited. So just if you can send something, we'll have the addresses. I meant to have them in the bulletin, and I forgot to, to tell them. So if you'd like to send something to Amanda or Henrietta, we will have that in the bulletin or on the back table. Um, we'll have an address for them. And uh, if you'd like some ideas, talk to me. So, Brother Sean, would you ask God to bless the offering? Let's take this up today, and uh, we'll move on with the service. All right, next let's turn to page number 356. I'm going to have you stand once again. 356, whosoever will may come. We'll sing all three verses this morning. Whosoever heareth, shout, shout the sound. Spread the blessed tidings all the world around. Tell the joyful news wherever man is found, whosoever will may come, whosoever will, whosoever will, send the proclamation over vale and hill, tis a loving father calls a wonder home, whosoever will. May come, whosoever need, need not delay. Now the door is open, enter while you may. Jesus is the true, the only living way. Whosoever will, may come. Whosoever will, whosoever will. Send the proclamation over vale and hill. Tis a loving Father calls a wonder home. Whosoever will may come. Whosoever will the promise is secure. Whosoever will forever must endure. Whosoever will. Tis life forevermore, whosoever will may come, whosoever will, whosoever will, send the proclamation over vale and hill, tis a loving father calls a wonder home, whosoever will may come. 
Wonderful. Take your Bibles, if you would. All right. As you're turning there, I want you, um, on our screen, we have a vision for the mission. This month, we are going to look today at God's dependability. Last Sunday night, I started this, and God really put some things on my heart to rely on Him more. And I want to go from a different angle, and I'll explain that. Uh, but next week, we're going to talk about God's message um, from one of the apostles that um, was there when Jesus came back and the excitement that came. And then the next week, we'll talk about God's messengers on our missions Sunday and then our purpose with it all. So what I'd like to do, go to this next slide if you would. If you cannot stand, we're going to sing one more chorus. If you can't stand, I, under, I get it, if your health does not permit you to. And then we're going to read the scripture here. But I want to sing this chorus that God would help us to open our hearts. This is how it goes. <clears throat> open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. To reach out and touch Him And say that we love Him Open our ears, Lord And help us to listen Open our eyes, Lord we want to see Jesus. Good. The more we look for Jesus, the more we'll find him in his word here. Take your Bible to 1 Chronicles chapter 29. 1 Chronicles chapter 29, if you would. I hope that is your prayer today. God, open my eyes. God, I need to hear from you. Some may be desperate today. Some may be discouraged. Some may just things are going okay, they're just going so-so, but the future's looking kind of bleak. I don't know where you're at today, but I want to help you. 1 Chronicles chapter 29. 1 Chronicles chapter 29. I want to talk this morning about God's dependability. God's dependability. From a man who experienced, <laughs> in my opinion, <laughs> every side of the spectrum. He went very low and got in big trouble with God. He, he was doing really well, and God allowed him to do great things. Let's look at 1 Chronicles chapter 29. Look down at verse 10, if you would. Wherefore, David blessed the Lord before all the congregation. And David said, Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Would you read verse 11? is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted. Good. Both riches and honor come of thee. Who do they come from? God. And thou reignest over all, and in thine hand is what? Power and might. And in thine hand is to make great and to give strength unto all. Now therefore, our God, we thank thee and praise thy glorious name. Look at verse 14. But who am I? What is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort? For all things come of who? It's God. For we are strangers before thee and sojourners, as were all our fathers. Our days on the earth are as a shadow, and there is none abiding. O Lord, our God... All this store that we have prepared to build thee in house for thine holy name cometh of thine hand and is all thine own. We're going to stop there this morning and we're going to look at God still dependable this morning. Let's pray and love we'll our special. God, we need you. We love you. Lord, I thank you for this church. I thank you for your people. Lord, it's been a rough few months. Lord, a rough year. And yet, God, you're still there. Yesterday, today, forever. You haven't changed yet. You're still the same God. And God, I thank you that we can depend on you. And God, I pray that we would. It's in Jesus' holy name we pray these things. Amen. You may be seated. I 
I've been singing about my Lord for many years. I've sung when I've been happy. I've sung when I've had tears. And some folks may question if it's all been just a show. But the reason that I'm singing, I want the world to know. I sing because there is an empty grave. I sing because there is a path that saves. I sing because His grace is real to me. I sing because I know I'm not alone. I sing because someday I'm going home where I'll sing through all eternity. Now I've sung to those walking, walking through the fiery trial. And I've watched the saddened faces turn into happy smiles. Then I bowed my head and whispered, Lord, please do the same for me. And I'm proud that I can tell you that he's given victory. I sing because there is an empty grave. I sing because there is a power that saves. I sing because his grace is real to me. I sing because I know I'm not alone. I sing because someday I'm going home where I'll sing through all eternity. I sing because there is an empty grave. I sing because there is a power that saves. I sing because His grace is real to me. I sing because I know I'm not alone. I sing because someday I'm going home where I'll sing through all eternity. I sing because I know I'm not alone. I sing because someday I'm going home where I'll sing through all eternity. and I took a couple days this week. Can everybody hear me okay? We set up there, gentlemen. Uh, my wife and I took a couple days this week to get away, and I appreciate your patience with that. We were not here Wednesday night. We took a couple days. We went to Cincinnati, Ohio, and uh, we went to the zoo and the aquarium. Just took a couple days just to take some time and uh, relax for a little bit. And uh, to be honest, though, I don't think my favorite part of the trip was, had anything to do with the zoo or the aquarium. And some of you are going to think I'm a bad parent, and some of you are just going to laugh. Well, we were sitting at the, the motel's breakfast, and we had gotten the breakfast, and of course, you're not allowed to dish it up yourself. You have to go, and they give it to you. So we had brought the breakfast back, and I was sitting there, and uh, Lucas and Riley got some oatmeal of some sort with berries in it and things, and it was cooling down while Lukey got impatient, and Lukey started to reach for something. Well... I did not do this intentionally, okay, so don't turn me in. This had nothing to do with me trying to do this, but the salt and pepper packets were sitting within his reach, and they, we, Quest and I had the biscuits and gravy, and so they were sitting out of the way, and um, well, I wasn't looking. I was looking back. They had the news on, and I was watching the news, and I turn around, and Lukey had the salt packet in his mouth, and he turned and looked at me with the weirdest expression I have ever seen from that young boy in his life, and looked at me with this face of disgust. And uh, so we, he put the salt packet down, and he looks at me, and uh, just 
we were dying laughing there and um, just to see his face and his expression. Well, once he knows that, you know, he's got our attention, of course, you know what he does. He reaches for the pepper packet now, and we kept that away from him. But uh, that, I'm sorry, but that's probably my favorite part of the trip. But, um, no, we had a great time just uh, with our family, and um, we went over the, if any of you have been to the Cincinnati Aquarium, they have a, a shark bridge. You can walk over where the sharks are swimming underneath and everything, and, uh, but you're not allowed to carry your children. They have to walk, and it's this narrow tunnel uh, thing, bridge with uh, the sides you can hold on to, but it's narrow, and we didn't know if Lucas would do it. Sure enough, went right across there. Riley went across there, and uh, we, we had a good time, though. So I appreciate your uh, willingness to let our, my wife and I uh, miss a Wednesday and go out there. We had a good time. So um, we, we thank God for our church here. Jumping into the story, I want you to take your Bible and go to the book of Psalms. We were here last Sunday night, Psalms 44. Some of you will remember this. Some of you might be where Psalms 44 is. I told you last Sunday night, I don't exactly know the author. There are many, many speculation. Many people have speculated over who the author is. Um, all we know, it was a very dark time for the person who wrote it for the children of Israel. And we see in the first few verses, he honors God. But notice what happens in verse 9. The author here cries out to God and said, But thou cast, cast off and put us to shame, and goest not forth with our armies. We see here a story where it felt to these people that God was no longer with them. God was no longer on their side. God did not care about their finances. God did not care about their family. God did not care about their future. God just didn't care. That's what the author, it sounds like. And he goes on to say, you make us turn back from our enemy. In verse 10 and verse 11, you've given us as sheep appointed for meat. God, you're no longer helping me. This may be where some of us are today. God, it just doesn't feel that you're around anymore. But I love as we get to the last part of the chapter, and I'm not going to re-preach last week, but we find in verse 25, for our soul is bowed down to the dust, our belly cleaveth unto the earth. This was a place of humility, a place they could go no farther down. But then this last verse in verse 26, arise for our help, and redeem us for what? Thy mercy's sake. Last Sunday night, we talked about when you're to a place, you feel like you can't go any farther. You cast yourself on the mercy of Almighty God. Not for your righteousness, not for your goodness, not for your holiness, not because you walk the earth, but for His mercy's sake. Now, we find the complete opposite of what took place in Psalms 44 in 1 Chronicles chapter 29. We find things are going pretty well in this chapter. We pick up in verse 10, Wherefore David blessed the Lord. Now listen closely. God is still dependable. Now, how many of you believe that David's strength was limited? Yeah, I mean, he was not... He was not God. He was not you know, omniscient, omnipresent. He did not have those abilities. How many of you would say your strength is limited? Okay, we can, we can liken that with David. How many of you would say your days are numbered? There, it's not like we have, there's no end of days on this earth as we know it. Okay, David's days were numbered. How many of you would say you've had a past that was sinful? Okay, everybody should have their hand or at least agree. If you don't believe you're a sinner, yes, raise your wife's hand. <laughs> Not going to say who did that, but um, yes, we would say our past was sinful. Now, here's something. David had faith in God. David's future was bright. Now, if you've had faith in God and God's plan and put your faith in Jesus Christ, your future is bright. So we can relate with all these things with David. Now, where are we at today? Where are we at in the story in 1 Chronicles chapter 29? What is taking place? Well... David is an old man. He's gone through a lot. He's been in a cave. He's been chased by a king. We'll go into some of that a little later. David is at the end of his life. David is the king over God's chosen people. Even Jesus will say pretty good things about David. But David was at the end of his life. Now, what is the story about here? David was permitted by God to collect the materials for a particular building. 
Everyone know what that building was? The temple. A place where they no longer would have to move the tabernacle, the tent, a temporary dwelling place. Now, the temple needed to be built, a place where the people could come and worship God. And we know things revolve around the temple later on in history. It's, it's, a, it's a big thing. But David was not permitted by God to build the temple. But David was permitted by God to collect things to build it. David was given the plans to build the temple from God. David had given the plans to build the temple to his successor, his son, Solomon. David had, the princes and the people had caught, got, caught, got caught up with David's enthusiasm and they gave and gave and gave for God's temple. Now, the king is pouring out his heart in praise to God for God's mercy and favor. Now, I want to look at a few things today. All of us can agree that our strength is limited. Our days are numbered. Our past was sinful. Our future is bright through Jesus Christ. David's hope, even though at times it fluctuated, it never stopped his hope in God. Now, if we look at a summary of David's life, you'll find many things. You'll find hopelessness. You'll find despair. You'll find great times of courage. You remember going before Goliath. You'll find God through every step of David's life. Now, we're going to look at some of these today, and so have your Bible ready. We're going to turn just to a few passages this morning. But why is God still dependable? Why is God still dependable? Dependable. I want to encourage you this morning. Verse 10. Wherefore David blessed the Lord before all the congregation. And David said before everyone as an older man, Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, our Father forever and ever. Now he's going to go on a little later and discuss and talk about the great things that God has done. But I want you to see number one this morning, God was present. God was present. David, I can only imagine as David is writing this, and he'll allude to this here in just a little bit, but as David is writing this uh, and saying this before God, I don't believe David actually wrote these books. Most, most would say probably Ezra possibly, but as David is saying this, I, I can only think that David is thinking about where God brought him from and where he is now. God was present. Take your Bible and go back to chapter 28, the previous chapter. God had given David instructions on how the temple would be built. Now look at verse 4. No, excuse me, look at verse 3. That way we can tie it together here. But God said unto me, Thou shalt not build a house for my name, because thou hast been a man of war and hast shed blood. God said, David, you're not going to build my house. I'm going to have your successor. I'm going to have Solomon. David, you've been a man after my own heart, but you're not going to build my house. But notice what he said here in verse 4. Howbeit the Lord God of Israel, what? Chose me before all the house of my father. That's Jesse. Let's talk about his father, Jesse. Over Israel forever, for he hath chosen who? Judah to be the ruler, and of the house of Judah, the house of my father, and among the sons of my father, he liked me to make me king over all Israel. I want you to understand this morning, if you'll stop what you're doing now, and you take an in-depth look and an understanding of your life, you'll find that God has been present from your birth till now. God has always been there. Now, you say, Pastor, I, I didn't always follow God. I wasn't always saved. I didn't always follow what God had told me to do. I'm saying God was still there, regardless of what you've done. David here is at a point where he's thinking back, and in these few chapters here, he's recognized where God brought him. He recognizes that God was active daily in his life. He recognized that God chose him to be king. God chose Judah. You know who would come from the tribe of Judah? Jesus. There's a reason. There's a pattern. But God was present. From the beginning, God formed him in the womb. Take your Bible. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 16. I want to encourage you this morning. 1 Samuel chapter 16. Saul 
as was told, God told the children of Israel, if you get a king, the king's going to have issues. But they wanted a king. So God picks Saul. Saul is chosen to be king. Now, notice in chapter 16, Saul has gotten in trouble with God. God has said, I'm no longer going to have Saul be king over my people. So here's what Samuel, I want you to do, the prophet, in verse 1 of chapter 16. Of 1 Samuel 16, verse 1, The Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil, and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. So Samuel goes. God told him to go. Samuel goes to Jesse's family. He sees the oldest, and he's like, oh, this must be the one. He's a warrior man. He's sharp. Man, this is the one that has to be king. No, not that one. Well, how about the, this son? This son, of course, he has to be king. No, that's not him. Well, how about this one? No, 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 that's not him. Samuel says, Jesse, do you have any other sons? Um, I've got the youngest. He's out there taking care of the sheep, so I didn't even bother to bring him in. He's, he's not king material. He's not who I want. So they bring David to Samuel and look down at verse 11. In 1 Samuel 16, And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? He said, There remaineth yet the youngest. Behold, he keepeth the sheep. Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent him and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and withal of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. Kind of sounds like your pastor. Just kidding. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. God said, All right, Samuel, you're the prophet, you're the man of God. Now anoint David to be the king over Israel. Who chose David to be king? Who was there the whole time? God was present through it all. Now here's the problem, folks. Listen closely. God is still here. God's everywhere. God knows exactly what's going on. God is present. If God, if we feel like God is not with us, it's not his fault. It's us. Now David recognizes that God was present. Even though God God knew he was where he was as a teenager. If you're a teenager in this room, God knows where you are. God knows what you're going to be. God knows who, the, the life He has planned for you. God knows. God formed Israel as His chosen people. God has a plan. And by the way, God's plan was not up for the Senate to vote on. God's plan was not up for Congress to vote on. God's plan was not up for the United Nations to figure it out. God knows and has a plan for centered around Israel. God's plan is there. God's plan is going to happen. David was a man God chose to use in a great way. All he had to do was listen, submit and follow. Submit and follow. God said, I I will use that young man. Can I say this? Listen, look, look, look. David at times was scared. Yeah, I've been there. Scared out of my mind. David sometimes uh, was allowed to not have the answers. God, why do you allow Saul to follow me? God, why do you allow the whole kingdom of Israel to be after me? You know it's okay not to have the answers. God is still present. God, David, uh, David, you're you're in a cave. You're running from Saul. David, you're hiding. You remember the story of David's mighty men? Basically a bunch of ragtag guys who come together and they follow David because they they can't stay anywhere. David would have to leave Israel. How many of you ever heard of the Philistines? The bad people, David went to live with the Philistines because his own home country wouldn't allow him to stay. You're allowed not to have the answers. You're allowed not, you're allowed to be scared at times. David was allowed to make mistakes. He had to understand God had to use him if something was going to happen. Number one, God was present. David in back in 1 Chronicles chapter 29. You want to understand that God is still dependable. Recognize that God is still present. Look down at verse 10. David said, Blessed be thou, Lord God of who? Israel. David recognized God had a plan not only for him, but for his country of Israel. Now notice next. David is still worshiping God. David is thrilled that God has used him. Look at verse 11. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, the majesty, for all that is in heaven and earth is whose? 
How many of you are on earth? Who do you belong to? Him. We're His. Can I say this? This is not David. I don't believe back then. Of course, I wasn't there, but I don't believe David was in his kingdom and he was writing out a bunch of notes saying, this is what I'm going to say. And he spent nights and nights thinking about this. I believe this was spontaneous praise because it was in his heart. Now I say this, it's okay to come and it's okay to, to sing because we have the words on the screen or we have the words in a book, but at home, is there spontaneous praise? Man, it just erupts inside of you because you're bubbling up with excitement because of who God is. God's been present with you. God is still there. And it just comes up. Man, I don't even know where it came from. Man, it's just exciting. God, you're so good. And you maybe start singing a song or a verse comes to mind and you become so overwhelmed with who God is. David said, God in front of everyone, oh Lord, you're the greatness. You're the power. You're the victor. Spontaneous praise. He did not recite it, a thought he had from a sermon. This was spontaneous praise from a man who loved God. Listen closely. This is from an attitude of gratitude. We hear that phrase and there's a song even about it. This was, came from an attitude of gratitude. God, I know you're there. God, I knew you had a plan. He's going to explain the plan in the next few verses. But God, because you're there, God is perfect. God not only is present, God is perfect. God cannot make mistakes. Look at a couple of these words he puts in here. Greatness, the ability you possess. <laughs> uh, power, that strength. Glory is divine or splendor you possess. A victory. This is not like, you know, like the story of when Samson was, was delivered or different people were delivered throughout the Bible. The word victory here is the idea of enduring or everlasting. You're the one who gives enduring or everlasting victory. And then notice he says majesty, admiration, which is inexpressible. David is saying, I don't have the words to say who you really are, God. My heart, and in the, in the English language, we don't have words to properly praise God the way he deserves it. Amen. We do our best and we sing songs and man, we, 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 we but to be honest, there's no way to adequately praise God for who He is and how great He is. We just give Him our absolute best. God, not only do, do you possess these qualities, but this is who you are. God, you just don't have greatness. You are greatness. God, you don't just have power. You are all power. God, you don't just have glory. God, you don't just have victory. God, you don't just have majesty. This is who you are are. Do you see the heart that it was coming from? Is that your heart this week? Is that your heart today? God, you're the greatness. God, God, you're the victor. God, God, you're the one. God, in heaven and earth, there is no one like you. God, my job does not compare to who you are. God, 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 my wife does not compare to who you are. And I love my wife to death. And man, I'd, I'd give my life for, but, but God, I recognize I love you more than anything on this earth because everything that's on this earth belongs to you. God, I love you more than anything. Is that a heart? Can you say today God has been present? Can you say today God is perfect? Never makes mistakes. That would incline that it's not God's fault. God, you're perfect. You have the sole right to everything. David was rightfully comparing his own imperfections with that of God's perfections. Listen, I've, I've got to hurry past this point. We could spend a lot of time here. God in all essence is perfect. Listen to this phrase. He is not becoming perfect. He is perfect. Rightfully should be the source of our humblest praise and gratitude. Listen, God is not becoming perfect. God's not getting better every day. God is already perfect. God is already the best. And that is rightfully in our place as human, human beings should be the source of all of our praise. Spontaneous praise. David is pouring out his heart to God. God is doing something great. David says, God, you're present. You've been with me. God, you aligned the children of Israel. You aligned us to be here today. God, you are perfect. God, there's nothing wrong with you. If there's anything wrong, it's on my end, not yours. We sp 
Oh boy, we could spend a lot of time here. We spend too much time calling out other people's imperfections while not focusing on His perfection. We spend a lot of time dwelling on other people. Shame on us. We ought to be spending time on His perfection. You know, my wife could say a lot of things about me and they'd be all good. But she could, no, she could say a lot of things about who I am. I could say a lot of things about her. I could say things about you. You could say things about me. I could be frustrated with you. You could be frustrated with me. We spend a lot of time thinking about one another. Shame on us. We need to spend more time thinking about God's perfections. God was present, number two. God is perfect, number three. Look at verse 12. Now his heart is overwhelmed and he's saying, God, this is who you are. And then David does something that Americans don't like to do. Verse 12, both what? And come of thee. Notice God is present, and I know these are alliterated. I want you to remember these this week. God is present, God is perfect, and God is the provider. You know one of the hardest things we as Americans have to do is saying our wallet belongs to God. No, 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 pastor, I work for that. <laughs> I got that money. That's my money. My friend, everything we have, we should be able to say, God, it's yours. I'm not saying today everything in your bank account needs to be written to the church. That's not what I'm saying. I praise God that he allows us to, to help our families and live a good way. I praise God for that. But an attitude we need to have is riches and honor come from thee. God, everything I have came from you. All this good that I possess, this kingdom, this wealth that I have. David said, God, it came from you. Do you know when David did not have a kingdom, he still praised God? You know, it's interesting, even when we don't have much, when we say, God, everything I do have came from you and belongs to you, and you can have it at any time. God, you can have my tongue today. God, you can have everything that I am. Everything I possess is yours there's a lot of, this is mine. <laughs> I, Pastor, I, don't, I can only give this much to God because I need the rest to live. You know what's incredible? And we'll talk about this here in a minute. And I'm not, I'm not, this, the message today is not on giving to the Lord, but I find it interesting when David became overwhelmed, he said, God, you've been there. God, you're perfect. God, you gave everything to me. Everything I have is yours. I find it interesting when we start praising and in a position of humility, we get to this attitude of, God, nothing's mine. <laughs> it's all yours and you can have it. God, you can take it. God, you can do with it what you want. God is the provider. You give wealth. You give strength. You are in control as provider of me and my family. I just submit to your control. Dads, sometimes we think it's my job. No, no, it's his job. We get that confused. Mom, sometimes we think it's my job. You know, it's his job. It's his job. I want you to see God is the provider. I love the, the psalm in Psalms 93 when we were growing up. My dad had us memorize it. And it talks about the Lord reigneth. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength. Wherewith he hath girded himself. The world also established that it cannot be moved. God is reigning. The word reigneth means he has dominion over all. Nothing can happen without God allowing it or permitting it. Friend, listen. This gives us comfort. God's reigning. God is in absolute control. Now, He allows you to have free will. He allows you to do things. But God is reigning. Absolute dominion over everything. This is a personal testimony. When God is present, when God is perfect, when God is the provider, then comes the question that David answers in verse 14. Now he says in verse 13, Therefore, our God, we thank thee and praise thy glorious name. If God is present, if God is perfect, if God is the provider, then there must be a personal decision. This is where the rubber meets the road right here. All of us so far, I think, would say, Pastor, that's right. We all agree with that. I would think everybody would say, I agree with that. Now, here's where the rubber meets the road here. David in verse 14, But who am I and what is my people? Who were David's people? Israel, that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort, for all things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. For we are strangers before thee, and sojourners, as were all our fathers, our days on the earth, 
are as a shadow and there is none abiding. O Lord, our God, all this store that we have prepared to build thee and house for thine holy name cometh of thine hand and is all thine own. Now, folks, if God's present and you recognize that today, you see it. God, you've always been there for me. God, you're always there. God, you've always been there. And then if we recognize that God is perfect, God's never messed up, ever. Never, ever, not one time, never made a mistake, never happened. God is absolute perfect. You know what happens? God, you're the provider. Now, here's where things get interesting. David says, who am I? And what are this people? Who am I? We were just in bondage. Where did Israel come from? Okay, they were the 12 tribes of Israel, right? Joseph was sent to Egypt, right? God spared Jacob and his sons. They came to Egypt. They grew up there. The, 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 the people there, the Israelites, they grew and grew. And you remember what happened? They went into bondage. They became slaves. You know how much money slaves made? <laughs> Not much. <laughs> they didn't have a lot. And then who brought them out of Egypt? God brought them across the Red Sea. They whined, they complained, they whined, they complained, they whined, they complained. God gave them chance after chance. And then God said, all right, you guys don't get to have what I have prepared for you. Uh, you don't get to go into the promised land. But Moses still could. And then Moses hits the rock when God told him to do something different. God said, Moses, you can't go in. So this is what you guys have to do. Go march around the wilderness and then you all pass away. After the wilderness, they get up, they get going again. They get to, to Jericho. They cross the Red Sea, get to Jericho. Oh, great things are happening. There's a revival. We're winning. And then comes this little city of Ai. They lose to this little city. Oh, my goodness, where are you, God? And then they go from Ai, and they go throughout the area, and they have victory after victory after victory. And God does these great things. God's with them. They're God's chosen people. And then you go through the judges. Right? Joshua, and then judges, and then you have these judges, and then the people say, God, we want a king. God, all the other people, they have a king. God says, I don't think that's a good idea. If you want a king, we'll give you a king. Saul comes on the scene. Did that work out? No, that was really bad. After Saul, David comes on the scene. David comes up. David does great things, sees great miracles, sees God do great things, and then David falls into sin with Bathsheba. He commits adultery. And then David goes into murder. And then David has to lose his own child because of his sin, because of what he had done. David repents, and then David goes on. Now David is at the end of his life. David's looking back, and he sees, oh man, look at where I've messed up. Look at what I've done good. Look at all these things. God, you've brought me here. You're present. God, you've provided everything. God, you're perfect. God, you've done all of this. And then David says these words here. Who am I and what is this people? Who are we? We had nothing. We were in bondage. We were slaves. We were nothing. But God, you gave all of this to us. I think it's kind of interesting. In verse 16, he said, O Lord our God, all this store that we have prepared to build thee in house for thine holy name cometh of thine hand and is all thine own. You know what David was admitting here? What was taking place here? They were raising money and gold and things for the temple. So David said, all right, I'm going to give a large portion of what I have for the building of the temple. And then David said, all right, who's going to join in? Let's show our love for God by giving to this project that God had a plan for. So everyone in the kingdom starts giving. Oh, and they give graciously, and they, they give a bunch. And now David is at a point, and he's saying, hey, you know what's funny? All of this we've given, and we've sacrificed a lot, but isn't it interesting, all of this was God's to begin with? Sometimes we think, oh, I've got to give and I've got to do this. And, you know, I'm not even just talking about money right now. But sometimes we think that we've got to do this and we've got to do that to be a good Christian and live this way and do this. Can I say this? David was at a point where he said, this was all yours anyway, God. My life is all yours anyway. It's incredible. If God chose to, God can take us out like that. It doesn't take a whole awful lot for God. David comes to a point in his life with humility and recognize God's been present. God is perfect. God has provided, and he's making a personal decision. None of this was mine to begin with. There's this personal mindset in verse 17. I know also, my God, that thou triest the heart and hast pleasure in uprightness. You see, it's not enough just to know that God has been there. That's not enough. 
It's not enough just to know that God is perfect. It's not enough just to know that God is the provider. But it's bigger than that. There's a personal decision. David is saying, God, I know you try the heart. I know you see what's inside of me. I know I can put on a show, but God, I know you know the deepest, darkest secrets inside of me. And David is saying, after his, he's about at the end of his life, he said, God, I know what brings you pleasure. It's uprightness. It's honesty. It's character. It's integrity. David is saying, God, you've done all this for me, but God, I know what you enjoy. God, I know what brings you pleasure. It's not enough to sing a worship song. It's not enough every once in a while to open your Bible. It's not enough every once in a while to say, God, you've given to me. God, I'm going to put my 10% in or my 30% in or my 50% in or whatever you do to give to God. That's not enough. It's deeper than that. It's not a ritual. David said, God, I know you see what's inside of me. I know you see the imperfections. God, I know you know all about me. And God, you take pleasure in a brightness. You take pleasure in my character. David goes on to say, as for me, as for me, not my kingdom, as for me, uprightness of my heart, I have willingly offered all these things. From deep inside, I gave it to you out of a heart of uprightness, honesty, character, integrity. This was not a show. And now have I seen with joy thy people, which are present here to offer willingly unto thee. This became, this became, if, if, can I use this word? I, I don't want, I know it's probably not a good time to use this word, but if you will, a pandemic. <laughs> in a good way. Everyone starts giving and everyone is happy and David is about to pass away. Solomon is going to become the king. They are going to build the temple to the Lord where they can worship. No more tabernacle. And there's joy in their giving and it's integrity of heart. It's uprightness. It is a personal decision. As for my heart, I gave out of joy. God, you know this. God, you look deep inside of me. You know where I'm at. He was so overcome with emotion. We don't have time to continue, but read the rest of this. He's so overcome with emotion that he is saying, he's praying for Solomon. He's praying for Israel. He's praying that they will keep this mindset. He's praying that God will continue this joy, this excitement. Can I say this? God is still dependable. Tomorrow, God is still going to be dependable. Next Sunday, God's going to be dependable. I had someone ask this this week, Pastor, what? They just passed this big bill and they're going to be sending the people a bunch of money and we're already in debt. What's going to happen to the American economy? I don't know. God didn't tell me that. God didn't say I have to know that. God told me that he's still dependable. If I trust in him, I'm okay. I don't know all your situations. Each one of you have something different you're dealing with. Every one of us have a story. But can I say this? God is still dependable. So what I want you to do, I want you to look back and see if God's been present for you. And then I want you to say, honestly, is God perfect? Or would you say, he's made some mistakes in my life? Because we've got to get that nailed down first. And then once God's done that, and then we can say, God, you're a provider. You've given me all of this. God, God, what do you want to do with it? And then we make a personal decision. And we say, God, I know you see what's in here. God, you know everything that's in this heart. God, you know me better than my family, better than my wife, better than my church. God, you know me. And I know that you know. Therefore, I'm going to give with some honesty, some integrity. I know what's inside would you say that God is still dependable? If you're watching on Facebook, I don't know who's watching, but if you're watching, is God still dependable? I say, yes, he is. And there's a reason to rejoice. As Miss Jessica sang, I sing because there is an empty grave. Dependable enough. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed this morning. Say, Pastor, why did you start Missions Month with this? Because if God is not able to save if God is not able to do great things, then there's no point to be a soul winner. If God's not dependable enough to do it, then we need to skip missions month. We don't need to send money to the world. We don't need to give. 
If it doesn't work anyway, why do it? If the Bible's not true and God's not real, why do any of it? But if God is dependable, and if he is perfect and present and is a provider, then I need to make a personal decision in some areas of my life. Have you doubted him? Have you gone through some rough times lately? I've said everything I feel God wants me to. I want the piano to go ahead and play. If you need to do business with God, you know. You can use an altar. If you need to use your seat, you pray there. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, if you died right now, would you spend eternity in heaven? Say, Pastor, I'm not sure where I'd spend eternity. Pastor Lane, that's me. Pray for me. Maybe you're watching through Facebook and maybe this is the first time seeing us or maybe you've watched many times and you don't know Christ as your personal Savior. Christ wants to save you. You have to humble yourself, recognize your need for a Savior, and accept that Jesus died to take your sin upon Him. Is God dependable? Heavenly Father, God. Lord, we see this time of praise that David had in his life, and we see this was during a good time. God, we see in Psalms 44, there was a rough time going on, and they cast themselves upon your mercy. God, whatever area we're at today, God, I pray we would take these steps and realize it is not about us. It is about you. And as we go into this month and we think about missions and we give to worldwide missions and Lord willing, our church takes on missionaries and God, each one of us sacrifices to send the gospel to the world. We'll recognize that this is bigger than us. It's bigger than our situations. You are in control and you are dependable. God, I thank you for these truths of Scripture. I thank you for the application that we can find. I pray you would give us safety today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. If you would, please stand. Thank you for being faithful tonight at 545, choir, if you'll be here. Um, if you'd like to sign up for either brownies or pie on that back table, there's a paper there, or talk to Miss Renee in the back here. We need that for Tuesday. Also, I need several of you to help me send cards or gift cards to Henrietta and Amanda. We want to be an encouragement. If you can't, don't, don't have a card, you want to just give a gift card, talk to me, let's get some things together and let's send some to them. We love you all. Thank you for being faithful. Brother Brian, I'm not leaving my wallet up here. It's God's, not Brian's. Brother Brian, would you dismiss us in prayer, please? Father, for allowing us to be here this morning to hear your word preached. Father, we thank you for this message. And Lord, I just pray we would take it to heart and just realize that you are uh, God over all. And Lord, I just pray that we all trust in you. And Father, I just pray now that you bless each and every family that's here and those uh, who couldn't be here. Father, I pray that you just give us uh, all the strength and help that we need. Father, watch over us and protect us as we go our separate ways. Bring us back to the next one hour. Father, we pray in Jesus' name. And...